joining us here now. Um, it's Joy Francis from Words of Colour here with DJ Chills and we're just getting ourselves in the mood with the summer vibes. I mean the sun is shining, it's, it's like sunshine in reverse. In the day it looks like it's going to rain. Now it's what, it's two minutes past seven and we've got blazing sunshine. So thanks to those of you who have joined us and I imagine more will join us as the evening goes on. Um, I'm here with DJ Chills, producer, DJ, composer, all-round fantastic human being. Um, you know, nominated Best Female DJ of the Year three times. Um, and we, would, we just heard just a snippet of um, the track Cosmic Voyage that was taking you on a voyage, hopefully. So let us know what you think about the track. Some of us... You've just joined us. You've missed that, the opening of our musical interlude before you joined us. So welcome. I'm here uh, with Chills to talk about music, spirituality, and giving back during COVID. Um, some of you may have been with us a couple of weeks ago on IG. That's why we moved it onto Zoom. There's some tech issues there, but hopefully none today. So... Um, Make sure you put your questions in the chat, please, so we can sort of deal with those later. I also ask you to sort of let us know um, what your lockdown or coming out of lockdown tracks are. So, you know, sh please share them with us in the chats. But Chills, good yes. to see you. Likewise, it's nice to see you. <laughs> it's always good to see you and hear you. Um, and here we are again um, to talk about music and spirituality and lockdown um i mean can you say a bit about cosmic voyage the track that you played to open us up um cosmic voyage uh it was a different kind of sound for me if you if if you hit all my other tracks this is very much uh disco kind of orientated i started off with the horns um and i was really interested in the way horns sound and how people fit them into tracks and so, yeah, that's where I first started with that track. And yeah, it literally took me on a voyage and I kind of built around that. And yeah, that's what you have now. Is that one that you produced or did you compose? Um, no, I just produced that. So I found the um, horn sample and then I just built around it. So I built the drums around it and then it just kept on evolving. Because the track itself, I cut off at a part that, it grows even more and it continues to grow and then it goes back down again. But um, I think because there was no vocals, I needed to create a journey with it. And that's what mm. I hoping that's what it would achieve. Yeah. Um, so what I want to discuss is, is how music captured you and when it captured you. When it captured me. Um, you know what? I feel like music's always been around, always. Like, if I look back at listening to music when my mum and dad were playing it, when they were together, and when um, I used to make, I used to make like mix CDs for people's birthday parties and stuff. Oh, like you that. were very popular then. <laughs> <laughs> 
so all the <laughs> members, I just used to take over the like sound system. I'll be like, no, 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 I'll do it. Don't worry. Um, and yeah, it just it's always been around, but um, I didn't really take to it until later on in life. So about eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, I think so you- at the time when I first started, I just thought, oh, this sounds good. This sounds nice. Yeah. So when you said that your mum and dad, you know, music was always around. So who, what sort of music did you, was playing in your house? Um, a lot of, because we were back home in um, Lagos, Nigeria. So it's a lot of uh, Sonny Ade, Shina Peters. Like, I did listen to a few Western music, but it wasn't as popular as, like, Fela. Like, mm. read Fela all the time. And it was like... Um, there was a lot of live music as well because when you go to parties there were always drummers and um, vocalists and like um, so I, that, that was my foundation basically into music yeah and so would you are you you know like photographers yeah you know the whole thing they take great pictures they don't like being in front of the camera so yeah. when you listen to music were you just nodding your head or were you dancing because you know DJ's behind a deck and to me it feels very much akin to photographers wanting to observe and create a vibe rather than being the vibe in a way. So how, yeah, how did that work for you? Were you a raver? Or um, did, you, did, you, did you know, I didn't just like music, I wanted to either make music or, or DJ? I think I was more of an observer. I still am, to be honest. I think I still am. But then there's moments where I'm like, no, I want to be in it kind of thing. <laughs> But um, yeah, I think I used to observe a lot as a child. I used to wonder how this was played, how they positioned their hand on the guitar. So yeah, that was... So when, when was your first gig? What happened? What, what, when did that happen for you? My first ever gig? Uh, <laughs> it was in Bar Rumba in West... Oh my gosh, Bar Rumba, yes. <laughs> like everyone knows Bar Rumba. <laughs> Everyone gets initiated into like into clubbing through Bar Rumba or or a club in West End. But mm. yeah, it was in Bar Rumba. I'd been following these DJs for a while, carrying their crates and their um, vinyls and just tagging along. And um, a week before, they were like, "Okay, you're gonna jump on." I was like, "Are you sure?" And they were like, "Yeah, you're gonna jump on." I was like, "All right, cool." And I was planning, writing what I needed to play. I had the set, everything. And and I didn't play anything in the order as I planned it because I realized um, as a DJ, you kind of, you have a set in mind, but the crowd might be totally different to what you kind of like imagined. So yeah, so that's, that's, that's what happened there. Yeah. But being in that situation for your first time out, that must have been nerve wracking because the whole point is that you've got, you know, the safety net of having, you know, you've got your playlist. Yeah. And then, but at the same time, like you say, you're an observer, so you're sort of sick, you're, you're reading the room, you yeah. know? Definitely. So, I mean, did that feel natural to you or did you later think, what on earth was I doing? Um, because I had them around me. So I kind of had the, like a, a family, per se, my musical family behind me. And they were just like, don't worry, just be calm. Don't worry. <laughs> it's okay. If you mess up, they won't notice. We will notice and we'll let you know after, but... They won't notice. Um, so it was fine. Um, I, I'm sure I messed up. I can't remember the specifics, but like I'm sure there was a few clanging here and there. But I've evened it out now. <laughs> so yeah. And what music were you playing at that time? And was that gig was that in the West End or was it uh, like a private party or, or what? So it was like um, a Friday night, and it was like commercial hip hop, R and B, and I was just doing the warm up set. So I I went back into nineties. I remember specifically sitting down and saying. I'm going to make sure I do a 90 set. <laughs> and so, yeah. Ah, so can you remember, give us some examples of some of the tracks you played? Um, I'm just going to go from, like, my typical 90 set, which is going to be S- SWV, and it's going to yes. have... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, it was just brandy, old school brandy, old school... Um, Monaco as well. A lot of females. I think mm. all the guys were there. I was just like, okay, let's put some females into this mix kind of thing. So yeah, I think that was yeah, that was what I was doing then. But yeah. And the thing is, you know, you're talking about, you know, the family, 
I mean, and you've spoken about the fact that, you know, a lot of the family on the scene are men. Um, and that you, you know, there's, you know, we've spoken before with the event, the ministry, you know, um, uh, the ministry members club about, you know, the, the differential experience women have had, women DJs have had on, on the circuit. And you seem to have landed pretty well because you've been mentored and been and play with and a part of the fraternity that, that's very male heavy. I mean, yeah, so can you speak to that a bit? Um, do you know what? I'm truly blessed. That's, that's first and foremost, that's it. Um, because when I went into it, um, it was it was 99.9% <laughs> male oriented, but um, they welcomed me in because I think they realised that I truly wanted to, like, I would graft as well because... I would carry their crates. I would go to the clubs. I would drive them as well because they wouldn't want to drive to Nottingham. I'd be like, okay. I'll wow. Yeah, literally, <clears throat> I'm in uni and after a lecture, I'd run to pick them up and then go take them to a gig and then come back the same night and then go to my lecture. And, um, and I think they saw that drive in me personally and they were like <clears throat> they wanted to like support that and I'm always grateful I still talk to them now they're still part of my team that I I play music to and like what do you think of this what do you think of that this kind of thing so yeah can you do a name check who are some of these these supportive DJs then um I think you probably know a few so uh Maurice from Rampage oh. Rampage. um there's Scandal that he's part of uh, Pure Connection and uh yeah, there's just, I don't want to start listing because then some of them will be like, okay, so where's my mention? <laughs> like, but those were the two foundation ones um, that came through. Um, there's also another one called Mark Sharma, but he moved to New York. So he's out there. But those were the, th yeah, those were the three, sorry. They started the event in Bar Rumba and they gave me my first, like. Um, and what was, that, what was that night called? It was called The Get Down. Anyone yeah. out there was at the get down? Let us know. <laughs> I don't worry what stays happened at the get down. We'll stay at the get down. You're fine. Um, <laughs> so, so you're, you're playing out now. You're part of a fraternity. You're, you're clocking up the mileage. Yeah. When did you start noticing that people were following you for you and your music? Um, I think it was when I decided to branch out. So I was doing events with them, but then I was like, um, I need to kind of step out on my own kind of thing because I, I, I just noticed that that was what all the DJs were doing. Um, and I was like, okay, so how am I going to do this? And I was like, okay, set up my, my, my um, page, make sure that I've got like all my music there and mix and everything. And then, so what I did, and they were fine with this. I used to create mixed CDs and then at the end of the event, I would just give it out to people at the event and be like, I have all my details on there and they'll be like, okay, so if you want anyone to like DJ and stuff. And that's literally how I started, um, yeah, started going into my own. Uh, so you're doing this now and, you know, like you say, you had sort of, you know, the Lagos influence you like you know you do Afro. You said about nineties, but Afro beats. When did that start to kick in for you? And in a way, that's when I mean, you think about the fact you were doing uh, the nineties with brandies. And someone put a question in already about what do you think about new, new school brandy? I like it. I think with music, you you kind of evolve. So you have to like whatever is around influences you, but you still stay true to your core kind of thing. I, I like I like the new stuff. I I think I heard. Um, Something on Instagram the other day, but yeah, I, I like her new stuff. Yeah. But when did so when did Afro beat? Because when you think about you know Lagos, the time you're talking when I grew, you know, I'm older than you, uh, considerably. Um, that you know, it's, it's like it's like high life. You know, it's like high life, man. You know, we're popping in for people's houses because you know my parents are Jamaicans and my mum. Any excuse, half parties with the sound system in one room. You had one the reggae for the older folk. The other room you had the, the you know, the funky disco music back then in another room. And then I'd go next door and have the high life. So in a way, and then you said about 90s and Brandy and Monica. And then, so when did Afrobeats creep into your set? 
because it's quite interesting because that then harks back to your 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 beginning of your musical journey, isn't it? It does. It does. Um. Uh, it started basically. They used to play Magic System a lot. That was the only Afrobeat song that they used to play, and I used to. I'm an observer. I used to, and I always used to watch how people would dance to that. Just one track. Like if if your set was going downhill, throw that track on every <laughs> or Candy. Those are the two. Yeah, that would bring your like your night back up kind of thing. And I was like, okay, there's something here. And I was like, oh, I spoke to my mom and I was like, what do you think about me incorporating this into my kind of music? And she was like, well, you know it, so why not kind of thing? Um, and yeah, I started playing a few tracks and I made a mix. Yeah, I made a mix. I can't remember. Yeah, it's on my SoundCloud. It's still on my SoundCloud. Um, and it was one of the first ones. And everyone's like, Afrobeats? Mm, no, we're not ready for that yet. And I was like, no, trust me, you will be, you will be. And I just kept on incorporating it. So it, it won't be, it, would, it wouldn't start off be like a 15 minute, it would just be like two or three tracks, just enough for them to dance to and then be like, okay, where's the bashment? Or where's the, where's the something else? That's, that's what I had to do at first. But now... So like wean them on it, isn't it? It's like wean them on it. Yeah, because I mean, you do so many club nights and, it, and it's, I mean, look at it now. It is huge. I mean, you know, and, and that sort of crossover now as well. And also the fact that if we, I think you'd be the first women who was playing it, I would imagine, on the scene at that time or not. Um, I, 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 I don't particularly know. I just know that I was a contributor. I'll say that. <laughs> You're so modest. <laughs> Um, so who at the moment on the scene are you inspired by? Um, DJ wise? D yeah, DJ, yeah, and producers. Um, DJ wise, there's so many, like, people that are on the radio station, like Croydon FM, all, yeah. all the female DJs, all the male DJs that are on there, they inspire me, they, like elements of the music that they're, they're playing, I'll listen to them and be like, oh, that sounds right. That, I'm going to use that. Um, like DJ Aries as well. She's not on Croydon FM, but she's doing her own thing. Um, she plays a lot of Afro beats, Afro house as well. Um, uh, there's And there's the new generation coming through as well. Um, Tayo IQ as well. She's doing a lot. Um, but so many people influence me and they don't even know it like i would just scroll through on their timeline and see them doing something or, or or their music and it's like wow this is amazing like but it's so <laughs> it's so good to hear you all the name check has so many women's names when you think about it in the past it would be more tricky and I mean, you know, you've got to look at someone who's been laid in the foundation for that, along with others who laid it for you, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, there's, there's Inga sounds and stuff like that. So, you know, props, it's, it's, it's exciting. And you know me already, my budding <laughs> DJ self and getting my lessons, well, well, before COVID. I know. And the pandemic, I was so onto it. People, I may post my little session, <laughs> no. DJ Chills when I had my first session and, and I actually did something and it made sense so I may put that up actually um, you know actually before I want to come to COVID because I mean that's one of the reasons why we're here to chat as well yeah. um, but before I ask you to play the second track okay. um, for those of you who missed the first track it was Cosmic Voyage uh, you know that opened us up which is fantastic um, and how do you feel I know that you said I mean, we could talk a bit about this in terms of the COVID sort of segment, but, you know, you were looking, not necessarily to completely move away from DJing, you know, you've got your, you know, radio show and stuff, but in terms of being more involved with um, producing and composing. So yeah. do you miss, I mean, you know, in terms of being in lockdown, yeah. what struck you about what you missed and did miss about DJing and playing out and music and the scene? Um... I guess it was that instant reaction that you get from a crowd when you played music um, and that connection. Like, as human beings, we need to connect to other human beings. And it was, it was such a drastic shock as well. I was just like, okay. 
I don't mind being in my own space, but I would like to plan to do that, not be forced into it kind of thing. So that was a big impact. And a lot of the time when I play, I'm able to play my music as well and see the reaction if people like it or not. But I wasn't able to get that. And I was just like, oh, what, what's going on? How is this going to like pan out kind of thing for me? But I've kind of, yeah, worked it out now because I've gone into my creative zone now because I'm producing and recording and stuff. So it's much, yeah, much better. So before we sort of talk a bit more about the COVID space, and the creative space, because some people, it's funny, some artists, as in painters and so on, are saying they're struggling with the space to, to produce. But yet people I know who are writers, and, you know, and like yourself, but and musicians seem to be doing pretty well. So that's quite interesting. So look, I'm going to ask you to introduce the next track that you're going to play. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not used to this yet. But, uh... <laughs> okay. So this is... A... <laughs> this one is dance this was released this this year as well and it's featuring um it's not featuring it's a collaboration with miss locker um and yeah this is more of a afro housey vibe <laughs> my goodness i tell you i miss dancing that's a life my lifeblood so i'm having to do it in my house and scare my neighbors you know um at the moment it's just when you hear that it's just your body needs that you know so so you said that came out early <laughs> pre-covid <laughs> um i kind of made it for a dance floor i was like <laughs> like this would be nice for the dance floor but you know what? Everything happens at, this, at its own time. Um, yeah, so I'm cool with it. Well, well, the thing is, you know, in terms of like at home, I'm doing fitness and there is someone called Ashley fit, um, and she calls dance the new gym. And I think she's at, and her plate, listen, so I think some floorboards are going to have to be reinsured because I think there's some serious dancing going on in people's houses at the moment and places, you know, you know, yeah, outside of doing Zumba. Um, so... Dance, so that you're, that's one that you produced, yeah. and would you did you compose that one as well, or is that what? Yeah, yeah. even the chords and everything, and yeah, it was all composed. Um, that was yeah. I, I think all the all the latest ones that I've created have all, all just been composed. It's like I've just pushed myself out of my comfort zone a little bit, and yeah, it's come out good. Um, thank you everyone that's saying that they like dance. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, yeah, oh, nice. I, I think I'm just curious now because we were talking about DJing and the fraternity and the community. And then, you know, we've heard the first track you produced, this one you produced and composed. When did all that happen? When did you know, okay, I want to get into producing and composing? What, what prompted that? I think initially when I used to DJ, there'd be a section where you'd have the intro and the outro and you could create a quick mashup. And I was like, oh, technically I'm creating music on the fly kind of thing. So how, how much further can I take this? And a lot of DJs, the older generation of DJs, they would go into production. So I was like, okay, 
there's something here. Your career is still going, and that's because you're bringing this element into it. Um, so that kind of just made me like go tunnel vision into what what what's producing, what what's the, what you have to do to be a producer. And yeah, that's how I became. And did it surprise you how you took to it? Because you know the tracks you were putting out on IG, and IG seems to be the perfect platform for you for what you do, isn't it? So yeah, what did you surprise yourself? And also, what 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 are you drawn to musically and sound wise? You know what I mean? And also in terms of some of the collaborations as well. Um, I, I was I wouldn't say I was surprised because when I was younger, I wanted to take music. I did music lessons and I wanted to take music, but they kept on pushing me to play drums and I didn't really like the drums. So I was like, okay, let me get that. I'll do something else. And then when I came back into it, I, I went back to the keys and that instantly was just a go-to for me. Things that stand out to me, you're like, if I'm working with a vocalist, I'd rather hear the vocalist's voice and then I can build around it. Um, instead of just inserting the vocalist on the beat that I've already created. I think that works a bit better for me, which is, it took a while for me to realise that. It took me probably like two years to realise that. But um, yeah, that's what happened in regards to um, progression with a vocalist. But working on my own, if I get my uh, drums and my bass done, I think then I can just bring all the elements in and it's all good. But yeah, that's how I kind of work. So I want to bring us back to COVID. Okay. <laughs> and like you say, you know, it was very sudden, um, but you're sort of finding your creative flow now in yeah. it. Um, at the same time though, you know, you are a spiritual person yeah. uh, and, you know, you grew up in a Christian household. Um, I mean, how does that, guide you what does that look in the world of a dj come producer come <laughs> composer do you mean how how you know because obviously it's the essence of who you are but you're on a scene that's demanding quite ego-based entertainment you know very external facing and you see an observer so how then do you negotiate that within yourself about sort of coming from that space and holding that space a spirituality would you say um i think it's helped a lot a hundred percent because i like you said the industry is very you've got to be the star you've got to be the, on the limelight and that's not me personally but i do have the extrovert personality that comes out when i'm playing music or when i'm listening to music so what spirituality allowed me to do was balance the two so when it's time for me to relax and just get myself back together then i'm able to do that and that's what it helps me to do so that when it's time to dj and give everyone my energy kind of thing that's where i'm able to um balance it out yeah so that it did definitely help meditations definitely helped um uh, during covid uh just having time to go within like know who i am like remember who i am actually not know who I am, remember who I am kind of thing. Because you, you're you always working at such a fast pa pace, sorry. Um, one minute I'm on radio, come back from radio, I'm doing this and I, and then I wake up early in the morning and then I'm doing radio plug-in and then I'm doing this. I, even friends will be like, so where are you now? Because you're not at home, we can tell. Um, and so I was doing that constantly and that's for a couple of years and I'm, and it was starting to take its toll. So um, it gave me time to just pause and just like gather everything together and put it in place and plan. And yeah, so I, I feel like, yeah, it gave me that balance. But do you think that's got something to do with why then, because again, you know, you've got to see lots of alcohol, late, very, very late nights, early mornings. Yeah. And even with meditation, that is a hard thing to sustain, isn't it? And, and it, your equilibrium. So do you think with COVID and the fact, like you say now, you are moving away from sort of club night DJing, um, that that has a part to play in it, that the fact that you can sort of go within, produce, collaborate and work in a way that's less frenetic. I mean, 
do you think, yeah, so what part do you think that's got to play? And, and, and how much has COVID accelerated that? Because you said that, you know, we spoke pre-COVID and, you know, you were, yeah, you're producing and you're, inter- you know, talking about composing, but it seems like you've now actually just made the decision, like, this is what I'm, so where are you at now? Well, and my- how much has COVID played a part in, in, in you moving away from what, where you started, really? I, I, think, I think it gave me that extra push, definitely. But I also think it made me realise, look, sometimes you can enjoy what you're doing, but then you can carry on enjoying the same thing. You're repeating yourself. You're not progressing. You think you're progressing, but you're actually just doing the same thing over and over again. And I felt like I've accomplished everything that I wanted to do in regards to club DJing. Like, there's oh so much you can do in that without um, burning out <laughs> because the late nights, the drinking, um, not that I'm a drinker like that, but yeah, and it just, it does take its toll. So now I've kind of been given the space to um, take that leap and also enjoy it as well. It's another experience. Like it's given me space to think, look, life is about experiences you've enjoyed that experience in that um, in the industry there. This is a new experience, maybe a different kind of experience, but it's still something that you enjoy. So go with it kind of thing. And so, yeah, that's where, where I'm going. I still do radio, but um, yeah. So those who are here and still with us, hi. Um, let us know, like I said, um, at the top of the uh, in- interview, what are your lockdown go to tracks what's coming up for you you know because a lot of the time you know this is such an emotional time particularly if you are black and you know of color um so you know your musical taste may be different you may find that there is there are sort of certain tracks that really calm you and, and soothe you others where you may be like me i need a bit of freneticness i need things that are, are, are upbeat but then i listened to jill scott the other day from you know, her first, a debut album. Uh, and from beginning to end, it's 20 years old this year. And I just thought, oh my God, this thing still sounds so fresh. And I just, it just made me just connect with all different parts of myself. Do you know what I mean? And I was scrapbooking while I was listening. I was doing my hair while I was listening. So what, what, what's come up for you? You know, let us know. Because it's really, yeah, I'd love to know. Um, you know, because for, for some people, COVID is, is devastating for a variety of reasons. For others, it's been transformative. And, and maybe people think, you know what, I ain't going to do that anymore. Or this is what I want to do. And why haven't I not done that? Why am I delaying or deferring or, or avoiding? Yeah. And even why am I avoiding myself? And music is a gateway to so many different things. So, yeah, please let us know. You know, that would be really, really cool. Um, I think, you know, has your music taste changed since being in lockdown is there something that it's made you think you know what that's because you mentioned classical yeah. I mean, before before lockdown when i did my session with you you mentioned classical so what yeah so it hasn't particularly changed it, uh, it's just evolved a bit more so the classical element of it was that um kids i the end goal is to work in movies and films so score for movies and film and with that you have to have your foundation in check like mm. they're not gonna let you just put anything on like the main person everyone goes to is Hans um, Zimmerman and yes go, he's the guy and so I've been I've been doing my thing where I just go tunnel vision and just watch and watch and see how someone's progressed in their career and he's set his foundation even as well as um, Quincy Jones as well. He used to compose. Oh. Beginning, and he used to sell them for like $10. And I was like, you used to sell your, your artwork. But that was kind of like the foundation that got him to where he is now. And it's like, he's an icon. So um, that element of um, music is where I'm trying to build as well um, to make sure that it just tallies up with my ear for like making people move kind of thing. If I can bring that together, um, yeah. I'm working on something as well right now. You, you mentioned that I just got the vocals the other day. So yeah, 
<laughs> is, it a, is it a classical influence track? It's, uh, it's with an opera singer. Whoa! Yeah, so, yeah, you got the exclusive. <laughs> nice! Okay, when, when, when are you expecting that to be out? Uh, um, you look many... so excited. You look excited, <laughs> Chills, man. You look so excited about that. Sorry, go on. Um, the beginning of next year, I think. Because I've, I've, I've still got music that I've still got to release and collaborations I've still got to release, so I would like to give them space to breathe as well. But, yeah, this is going to be nice. Yeah. So there's a question here. How much is making music a spiritual experience for, me, for you? And that's from JB. Um, it, is, it is. Recently, it's been a lot. I was having a conversation with my best friend. Well, I don't have best friends, but my close friend. And he was like, he was asking me about this track called 1111 Accord. And I was, and we were watching Matrix. And I was like, um, and I said to him, do you know that I wrote this track while, after I finished watching that scene in the Matrix? And it's when they're in Zion and they're dancing before they think that everything's going to get destroyed. And I can't actually remember making the beat, but I just remember being influenced by that scene and sometimes that will happen where you just completely like forget everything and you're in a kind of flow state they call it and you're just you're just letting the music come through kind of thing and I feel like it's it's come through a lot more now that I've been meditating a lot eating a lot and just um going within like yeah it so I would say 80 to 90 percent <laughs> like that's how much I would say now pre-covid I was bouncing between the two kind of thing but yeah more and so now I want to talk about it the other end it's quite interesting because Isha hello Isha I'm waving to you um she says she's been and she's young younger lady and you know I've been listening to 90s um, and be an early noughties track for when I was a teen and that, that music is healing. I mean, it's funny because, you know, you, you said that you're missing seeing, you know, dancers, clubbers. Yeah. At the same time now, your music is inspired by your spirituality and now you're, you're sort of, you know, you move from 90s to Afrobeats to classical and there must be going to be a whole amalgam organic sort of development as a result of that. Um, is that something that you are now, rather than just seeing people move to your beats, that you actually would like them to be equipped at as a sound for them to feel healed by your music? Or That would be amazing. I think um, within, the, without getting too deep into it, every note um, has a frequency that heals each chakra. Mm. Um, and... Technically, you could make a track where you're healing as well. There, there's there's stuff on online where you've got healing frequencies and stuff. So, um, the next port of call would be to create a track where it's like the underlying frequency is trying to heal maybe your heart chakra, or maybe take you to a higher frequency and heal your crown chakra. That would be like the next level of creation for me personally. Um, in regards to bringing the two worlds together, so spiritually and like music as well. So yeah, we are so going to have to have a separate conversation. Off, <laughs> I'm sorry, off Zoom people, because we're in the process of developing something, and we need to talk because I think the chakra chakra is so key to who we are as people of color, and we don't we're not. It's like you lose connection. You've got to be reconnected with it. Um, if you want to know, get a definitive, everyone who's, who's, who's still with us, um, Caroline Shola Arera, who, um, uh, who's written an amazing book um, on this. So you need to look her up. And um, because that makes so much sense to me. And there's, something, there's an app I'm free plugging here called Insight Timer, which is amazing. And they've got... Um, healers and, and yogis and meditation specialists from across the world. And you, there are actually a few black people on there um, <laughs> and Asian people on there. Because, you know, the dialect and the tone and everything is very different. And, um, 
And I'm doing chakra work at this very moment. I mean, I've always been into that, but I'm doing that. At the, it's, it's helping so much. And you're right about the chanting and specific music that's for, especially Tibetan music around the throat chakra and, like you say, vibrations. So that would be so fascinating to see now. Anyway, let, well, I digress a bit. Um, there's some other questions here. Um, where is it? Uh, would you ever consider doing a collaboration with an American artist? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm actually, <laughs> it's funny you say that. There's an animation that I put up on my Instagram, the cartoon one. I'm not sure if you've seen it. I saw that. Uh, that looks really, really good. And so this is from Angela Washington. So just to say, it wasn't my question. So it's oh, Angela good. Washington through that question. Thanks, Angela. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that is with an American artist. But, yeah, I'm, I'm open to working and collaborating with, like, anyone that's just open to music and just pushing the boundaries. And also, yeah, it's, it's not a thing where I say, no, I can't work with this person or that person, yeah. Oh, but the fact that you're saying that um, you have someone in mind... You're oh. saying you've, you, yeah, you've got someone because New York, New York has been a good city for you as well, isn't it? Because you did a lot of traveling in the last couple of years, New York, Egypt, even though that was a bit of a holiday. Um, <laughs> you know, what is that something that because you're here and that you know, the experience here and our, our musical landscape here is so broad, there's so many musical styles that can coexist, you know. So, you know, how do you feel about your music reaching beyond? the UK? I welcome it. I welcome it a lot. Um, I think that the more people I could, like, so the last track I've done was with a Spanish singer and it's like, that's a whole different market. They is a whole yes. internal sound. Um, and I don't understand the language fully, but I understand the sounds. So that's how we were able to come together kind of thing. And I think once you've got that f foundation there, yeah, you can just work with whoever, like, and they can bring out elements in, out of you and vice versa kind of thing, so yeah. And it's funny the countries that you're picking, because when you think about Spain and the Moors, our history is black people there. And also there's someone called Isha who is on here, who is a fluent Spanish speaker. Esto español, pero solo poco, in my case. Um, and she travels around and, and worked in teaching English as a second language in Spanish-based country, and she follows you, so you should check in okay. with her, because she's a real music head. So, okay. Isha, you two connect, please. Look at me looking at the chats like real people there. <laughs> yeah, um, you, know, you need to connect with Chills and, and start sort of sharing ideas about Spanish uh, musicians, and then you get a credit on the track. And, and, and talking about that, uh, the question for Isha is, do, is there... Um, a track that you feel a spiritual connection to? A specific track that I feel. Uh, it's, it's almost like asking me, what is my favorite <laughs> <laughs> Well, that came from Isha, yeah. Yeah, like, Asha. there's so many, like, a lot of the times it's, it is like Shana Peters and it is Fella, only because I used to remember being sent to bed, but the music's still playing. And I would hear the different guitar sounds and him conducting the, um, the instrumentalist live on stage. And you're just like, well, I'm trying to sleep, but I can hear this music. So which Fella track? Um, it's probably Shakara. I think it's Shaka. It was just so much of a, that was all the time being played. So I think that would be mine. I would, because I was young, I didn't understand the meaning behind the tracks. I just mm. it made you want to move. So yeah, that would. And that's it. What, so me kind of making you want to move doesn't necessarily have to be around our understanding about dancing to es es to escape. I suppose you can dance to escape, but also you can dance to connect with yourself and, and others as well. Um, so, oh, uh, Isha, I was gonna say, lo siento, um, habla, no estoy, habla, 
Espanol. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just saying because she's she look at the good Spanish listen here about <laughs> and I realised I was talking on the top of my head and I should have said hablo hablo si sí, no habla si sí? gracias oh Joanne we love a Spanish I've got two Spanish speakers on here now <laughs> fantastic muchas gracias so I know I need to be picking up my Spanish again more and I'll, that's a hint I want to be on your track all right so British Spanish Spanglish so look um before we wind up. You're going to play a bit of formula. If you say a bit about that, that's your latest track, your new single that came out a couple of weeks ago on your birthday. Yeah. So, right. um, yeah. So, yeah. If you want to say a bit about that before you play it. Okay. Formula. Um, you know what? A formula is a special one to me because I just came back um, from Nigeria and I was like, um, I was in a good space. And I was just playing around with some chords and stuff. And I was just listening. And I was listening to a lot of Usher at the time. <laughs> so um, it kind of inspired me in regards to that whole uh, sound, that 90s kind of R&B sound, because I tried to f throw that in there if, if, if you listen to the intro of the chords. But yeah, and then I sent it to the Spanish singer that I saw in the studio one time and I was like I really want to work with her but I don't know what to create so I sent her the, just the chords and just a few bits and I sent it to her and the other um, artists on it as well uh, he's an Afrobeats artist 705 and the singer is called Baddy Girl this is Formula enjoy <laughs> actually um that it, yeah it is a banger jb absolutely look you are so i tell you i never get bored speaking to you chills because and, and you are evolving all the time you're so open you're so honest there's a fluidity to you your music and you know outside of that you know when you play live and the amount of people i know who when you've done things for us and when you played at my my 50th and you played at my 60th 50th and it was like, who's that DJ? Who's it? Whatever. And so there is something that you do that really connects people, not just within the space, but to you and how you play. Even if it's tracks we know without, when you know, the last time when you played at Ministry, you know, at our Christmas party, come on. So I just, I'm so excited for you and what you're going to put out there as well. So, um, yeah, <laughs> up for a COVID rape, people. <laughs> see, see, listen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like, you know, we don't know. I mean, is there, I mean, you know, you're in this different space now. It's quite interesting because, you know, we're sort of e so called, as far as I'm concerned, I'm still in lockdown. You know, as a black woman who's yeah. in my 50s, I'm still in lockdown. I don't think they e may be easy and stuff, but I'm not, I'm, I'm having a great life as best as I can, but I'm not going into these spaces in the same way. Yeah. So I'm just curious about. The fact that, you know, it's almost like you're putting your whole album together at the moment, really. Yeah. 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 So, so you'll have an album and such an eclectic but sort of connected um, album of tracks as a result of being in COVID. What's your, I mean, you know, I don't want to take you too far ahead, you know, because, you know, like, you know, the wonderful tennis champion, a sportswoman ever, sports person ever, Serena Williams says, you know, it's a match at a time. 
mm. you know, and, and I'm sure you're taking it a day in a at a time and a track at a time, but are you even remotely looking ahead about how things will be? Because you came in as a DJ stroke producer, stroke beginnings of composer, and now you're going to leave as a composer and producer more than a DJ. So where do you see yourself? Progressing. Yeah, outside of this, you know, because I mean, COVID, you know, you can, you're in a bubble in a way, but also you must be thinking, okay, I'm making all this music, I would like it to be played outside of the sort of virtual space. So where do you see that? Um, I think that, like I said, I wanted to go into like TV and stuff like that. So I think um, there's so many elements now that it's funny that I'm not DJing because I can go into these um, places. I, only the other day I've decided to get into a studio now. So I'm, I'm oh. working like a studio and also the studio has podcasts and stuff all incorporated. So it's like a creative space. And so now I know that I've got a space I can ask um, artists to come, let's record, it's clean, it's safe, it's, it's just going to be us and we're just going to create the music, send it out to wherever it needs to go. If it's the radio station, if it's to TV, if it's to online blogs, um, or even online um, influencers as well, they need music. So that that's another avenue kind of thing. And um, there's also like, the mindful and spiritual community as well. Like I can't forget them because they they supported me and especially with my my tracks like higher eleven eleven accord it, it was it was more for for them. It was me like the, there's a sound like if you don't want to have a ra like a rave a festival you can play my track and it's been played in a few um events and stuff like that. So I don't really have a solid plan. But I'm bringing, like, it's giving me time to, like, just explore them, like, the different parts. Um, I'm just looking forward to just collaborating and just exploring music. Once all of this is over-ish, um, I would love to travel and just actually go into these, these different places and work with these musicians as well, because um, they're instruments that... I don't know how to play, but I love the sound of them. And um, I feel like I would take to them quite easily. Um, not in a boastful way, just in that I would just tunnel vision and start working with it. So that would be nice. I would like to travel a bit more and just like work with artists. So yeah, I, I have no solid plans, but I know that there's few elements I'd like to bring together kind of thing. Now everyone, her version of what is not a solid plan sounds like a plan. <laughs> so, so if you hear her saying this, I haven't got a solid plan, and then she's making you feel inadequate, that's why. Because to me, that sounded like a plan. That sounds a bit like what Damon Albarn did when he left, sort of stepped away from Blur and Gorillaz, and he went and found, without, I think he did it in a way that wasn't so cultural appropriation, where he worked with and collaborated with African artists and Asian, you know, North African artists and so on. Um, and the thing that strikes me as well is that even when you talked about the fact that you don't slot an artist into the beat, you find the artist and then work around them, it speaks volumes about yourself as an artist and the fact that you, music's important, but actually you are into supporting and working with artists, that the artist comes first. And I think that's, Again, no, I think that explains the moving away from DJing in clubs, really, because then it isn't just about the tracks. No. It no. Is, it's something else, and, and you're adding to the canon now. Um, so, look, we're going to start winding up soon. So is there anything that you want to ask those who are still with us? And obviously, this is going to be, we're going to make this live. It's been recorded, everyone. So we are going to put this up uh, on words of colour and we'll make sure it's available on all our social media platforms so is there something that you want to ask the people uh, I do I'll put you on the spot now isn't it yeah <laughs> I'm, that. Um, I'm open to any questions anyone wants to ask me I'm yeah I know sometimes I I'm not I'm not the pushy person online so I will put a video post every 
week or so, which isn't the best, but you know. <laughs> um, so feel free to ask me any questions and message me even after this, like don't let the numbers fool you. I, I reply back. <laughs> okay. So we can talk, we can collaborate. I will. Yeah. I'm, I'm open to working with like people as well. Like there is no, no boundaries in regards to that. And it's so funny. Cause you know me already. Like yeah. how, I mean, you've seen how much stuff we've done in yeah. the, in COVID. And so I can't say anything about using the space to be creative and, and, and making things accessible. And for me, it's always about as an, as a, you know, creative myself, it's about other creatives because you want to be in a world where you're inspired and you are inspiring others because then we're going to be an environment where we're all going to be fed, you know, artistically and creatively. So I now see what you've done. The team are already saying, look, Joy, yeah, you need to go on your holiday and give us a break. And now talking to you, I'm like, hmm, so I was wanting to do a festival. Ooh, I can see a festival where we look at music and we look at food and we look at um, the link between spirituality and all those things. So see what you've done. So look, if this is something that sounds interesting to you people, let us know. So look, chills. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, so look, and people have said thank you for a, a really lovely and inspiring discussion. Thank you, Isha. Um, yeah, Mel says the same thing. Really appreciate this. And um, yeah how talented you are and again about that's why we have to give it to her because she's so so modest and it's not a criticism remotely it's an observation because you know you you just love what you do you know um hang on ah very good point actually joanne miss one of school um she's a teacher and and, a, and she runs her own school so listen um she said DJ Chills, even though, as far as I'm concerned, I've never asked you about where, where that, the genesis of that name because it fits you so well. <laughs> but the question is, how did you come by that name? What made you choose that name? Thanks, uh, Joe. Um, okay, initially I had the, <laughs> the, the, the terrible first name, which was Black Ice, and I was just like, I don't like that name. Black Ice, I'm sorry. <laughs> And then um, a group of the collective were like, you're very chilled. Like, don't you want to, like, get hype behind the DJ decks and whatever? This was when I started just learning. I wasn't out there like that. And, then, and I was, like, chilled. And I was just playing around with it. And I was younger, so I was just like, I'm going to put a Z on it. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's how, literally, that's how chills came about. It, was, it wasn't anything, like, amazing that came to me. But, yeah, it was just because of, my persona and they were like yeah you're, you're just always chilled and I was like yeah there's not, I'm not gonna be jumping on the speakers or anything like that or you're not like the hype woman a hype person yeah yeah that's all. so yeah that's how it came through yeah jo Joanne um I think everyone agrees it's a great question I cannot believe it's so funny because how long I've known you <laughs> and I've never ever thought to ask you that because it fits you so well. <laughs> Even when you put your sort of tell me your real name, I'm like, chills. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you're going to need to change your job description. <laughs> and I'm sorry, this is funny. Love it. Black ice can be dangerous on the road. <laughs> so like, no, you know, bearing in mind you're dri dri you know, driving DJs everywhere. Maybe that's not a good idea. So I'm so glad that was short lived. <laughs> well, I, I would just um, like to say one thing. Thank you, Joyce, yeah. so much. Thank you for giving me this platform. And I want to thank everyone else um, for tuning in. And now is a long time for me to talk. And it's like, I, I'm i just grateful for making me feel comfortable and playing my music to you. All. So thank you. Oh, yeah. Listen, I, I, I will take the thanks. And I'm also being appropriately selfish, man, because I'm like, <laughs> I know, I just need to hear it and, and just have the context provided by you. So look, we're going to wrap this up now, folks, because it's, I don't know about you, but... I haven't had dinner. I normally eat at six. So um, chills once again. Congrats. I am so excited about the direction that you're... Every time I speak to you, it's like three weeks ago, I'm like, look at this now, about the, you know, working with the opera singer, about Spanish... I love Spanish music or Spanish influence music, Arabic music. So all these things, I could just sort of see you in this, this, this sort of so many different spaces, but I think you'll be connecting all this, these these 
musical strands and histories and legacies in your in your music no pressure but you're going there anyway so i'm excited for you and excited to hear the music so um yeah enjoy the next phase and um, make sure you let us know when the next track drops definitely definitely and thank you again <laughs> all right and thanks to everyone for joining and you know you can tweet about this or you know uh post about this we're on at words of color on virtually all the platforms and yeah keep in touch and um thanks for your comments and your questions and enjoy the rest of your week take care all right thanks